The XY Advisor podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. XY Advisor does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hey team, Ben Nash here. I'm one of the co-founders at XY Advisor and founder of the rapidly growing Pivot Wealth, which is my business baby. I started from scratch about eight years ago and I've since scaled up to become one of Australia's better known financial advice companies for high income accumulators. You can join me every Tuesday as I have the pleasure of furthering my own knowledge by interviewing some of the best people in our industry and beyond to improve every part of what we do with our advice process. We're currently hiring financial advisors and associates, so if our approach resonates, you can learn more at pivotwealth.com.au forward slash careers. This podcast is brought to you by MetLife 360 Health. MetLife has partnered with Teladoc to provide 360 Health virtual care, which gives your clients access to more than 50,000 local and global medical specialists through the convenience of the 360 Health virtual care app. And best of all, it's at no extra cost as part of their MetLife Protect policy. 360 Health helps to defend against serious illnesses so you can live healthier for longer. MetLife, inspired by you. Hey guys, Ben Nash from the XY Advisor team and today I'm here with Daniel Jackson. Daniel's an advisor, young entrepreneur and director at Modern New Financial Planners. Daniel, thanks for joining us, mate. Well, Ben, thank you for having me. I'm truly honoured. Mate, it's great to be chatting. Um, I've been following from afar with with your journey and uh, the, all of the stuff that you you put out online. But for anyone that perhaps hasn't seen it, maybe a good place to start is if you could talk us through your your advice journey and how you've ended up where you are today. So my advice journey began back in around uh, 2010. I was in a insulation business. I was a young entrepreneur, started about 17 years of age. And when I was doing this home insulation business, we did the home insulation program. And through the aftermath from that, me and my wife, we basically went and advocated for an entire industry and helped pretty much the small business owners um, be get compensation and be reimbursed for the failed program. And during that time, dealing with lawyers, dealing with the media, dealing with the government, I became a passion of wanting to help the small business owners and really help people in the world. I thought, what a better way to do that than become a financial advisor. And uh, in July 2nd, 2013, I actually got my first chance into the industry uh, when I became a CSO of a small practice here in Aubrey, Wodonga. And within three months, everyone realized I had a natural gift for this industry. So I went from being a CSO to a power planner. And then two years later, I became a financial planner. And it was around 2015. Uh, everything was going great, going wonderful. We were starting to learn in the industry. I became a national ducks with Kaplan Professional. And around 2019, I kind of became one of those advisors that found themselves in a bit of a situation uh, where I became a planner in the bowler environment. And it was during that difficult time in that period where, it's where I really started to thrive in this industry. Uh, a lot of people will usually hear the opposite from that, but in this time frame. I was doing, I completed my master's, I was doing the AFA Rising Star, I was getting out there helping people, making a real contribution to the industry, doing what I love, doing why I came into this industry. And after 17 months in 2020, uh, that's when I went out and decided to make the big step to go out on my own and start my own business. Uh, there were some challenges I faced along the way at the start. I um. Unfortunately, I suffered a slight mental illness during about three or four month period because of the shift in environments. And then in 2021, we just started uh, creating communities for advisors. We, I think I've helped about 2,000 advisors stay in the industry, either directly or indirectly, became a mentor and just started to help everyone thrive again. Here I am today uh, talking to Ben at XY and sharing stories with everyone and sharing my knowledge with everyone. Awesome, mate. Well, that is where XY started. Uh, I was just sharing a bit of that 
with you before we fired up the recording, but um, I know for me when I started, not even even before I started my business, when I was sort of figuring out advice after leaving an insto with a big, really set fixed model that um, a couple of the other XY founders, Clayton, uh, Adrian and Ray had all gone through Horizons and they um, were figuring things out. Two of them started a business and uh, were sort of pretty much throwing themselves in the deep end and um, we just started having those conversations, learning so much and then started getting more advisors in the room and learning even more from them and I think it's one of the great things that I love about the advice industry that we know that there's enough clients that need our help to to go around we don't need to be protective of that and i think if everyone's doing better advice it's only going to be a positive thing for more people seeking out you know our our help as well so that's really great to see and i love that ethos and mate um i didn't realize that you were the ducks of kaplan that's uh that's super impressive given the given the number of people that go through that program as well well done oh, oh thank you ben yeah the full story is I actually had a medical health issue at the start of the year and it was actually doing the education and working through Kaplan is um, what actually inspired me to become the Ducks. Like it's sort of that overcoming that health issue mentally and physically helped me by furthering my education um, is how I was the story about how I won that award. Wow, well done. Well, look, you've, cut, you've mentioned a couple of things there that, um, that were seriously challenging, but what would you say like – has been the most challenging part of your journey to date? I think uh, the most challenging part would have been around that 2019, 2020 period, um, being in that bowler environment. Uh, when you're in an environment like that, it's sort of, you know, the industry was going through change at that time, we're becoming a profession. Uh, there was new legislations coming in and everyone was feeling it. But when you're actually in that actual environment of the bowler environment, it's sort of a, it takes it to a whole new dynamic. There's a lot of times when you've got to keep morale up, you've got to be resilient, you've got to be there and try and help your peers whilst helping yourself. And it's sort of like a, a period of uncertainty that you don't know what you, where you're going to go, what's going to happen, and you just got to have faith in the system and believe in yourself and be able to back yourself and to actually get through that sort of environment. Mm. Yeah, I think that obviously it's a big uh, thing when it all came to a head and a lot of people, yeah, like uh, challenging and uh, struggled the industry, you know, the perception around that and that sort of stuff as well. So, uh, you know, good, a good chapter to see closed, I think, to to move, for, move forward from. But um, again, as we were just sort of chatting online, sometimes the, the obstacle is the way and it all sort of builds into our um, our approach to things and, you um, yeah, you know, what what we're all doing today. What would you say, um, talking about that that progress, like what, what have been the biggest shifts for you in, in what you do as an advisor or in business? Yep, so pretty much um, somebody once asked me when I did a course for Kaplan, they said, uh, you know, what sort of leader do you want to be? And I put in that, uh, you know, I know the sort of leader I don't want to be, so now I've got to become the leader I want to be. And it was from going from that period to now, I knew the sort of things that I, I didn't want to see in a practice or what I didn't want to see in my own practice that I learned to actually what to include, um, to basically eliminate that from the model that we have created. So we went from more of a, um, you know, we were very product-driven, very, uh, it was not so much saying revenue-driven, but we were in that, drive where numbers really mattered that we had to reconnect with our clients we had to reconnect with our communities we had to reconnect in a new way on a whole new level that made it more value to showed people the value that we actually give them and that's pretty much where we are today we are actually demonstrating that uh, as a profession the value that we offer and that's from what we learned from those sort of experiences yeah, it's interesting. Obviously, there's a lot of different ways that you can tackle it, but um, I suppose that, that does make a lot of sense. I know when I started my business, there, there were a few things that w I had been doing that I that I didn't want to do around charging model and commissions and and those sorts of things. So I think that can um, can absolutely help help you to shape up uh, your business. What tell me what was the 
what did the process look like when you were, you know, particularly coming out of that bowler environment, you're um, making a leap to start your own business, sort of starting almost with a, with a blank sheet of paper with the experience that you've got. How did you, how did you tackle that figuring out what your model would look like, who you'd work with and what you would actually do? Yep. So with that one, um, when I left that environment, a common, uh, when I said I had a mental illness, a very common mental illness that a lot of people experienced coming out of that environment was a thing called um, uh, adjustment disorder. It's sort of like a combination of uh, grief, depression and anxiety. And if it goes untreated, it could end up becoming PTSD if it goes for too long. And wow. because because I was actually suffering this and, and I was starting to feel like we kept it from everybody because at this time I was doing mentoring with students. I was basically building a community where advisors can mentor new people coming into the industry that I was sort of struggling in my own child, um, with that part of it, that going from a, an environment that had very little support to going back into this, uh, what I call the financial community and having all the support from so many people was very, very overwhelming. But mm. it was because I was in this state, I was um, talking to new people. I was encouraging people to talk about their issues that, the models that I came up with today and what I've did, um, basically what we're using today has been uh, pretty much shared from everybody in the financial service community. Everyone tells me what works for them, what doesn't work for them. We, um, we discuss different tactics, different plans, and we basically create something which we're getting the best from everybody uh, and discarding what didn't actually work for us. I love that. I, I think for... Me, one of the things that I've done over the years when working on a particular area of, of my business or the advice offering that I'm providing, whether it's investments or fee charging or service packages or whatever those things are, try to find two or three or four people that do well in that area that I respect and that it, I feel like aligned with from a, from a values and philosophy perspective and then get get them to unpack what they do but then pull out the bits that that resonate with me and then you sort of end up with the with the things that work for your personality your delivery method your clients your business um, and I've always found that to be fairly helpful because I think what works for one person it wouldn't necessarily work for me it wouldn't necessarily work for you even if it works really well for them you've got to really adapt because it's all you know human beings at the other end um of that as well so it's an interesting one but um yeah i, I think it it really uh yeah it makes makes a lot of sense as well daniel what would you say what are the things that haven't changed or that didn't change for you uh so a lot of things that didn't change um initially was this perspective of financial advisors i'm still uh I come in today with new clients, people coming in, they sort of have this sort of expectation of this is what we want, you know, make it happen today. Um, so what we've created with them, we, you know, we talk them through the journey, through the, the processes, you know, we just don't look at your superannuation anymore. We look at everything in total. We, we try to factor in your budget, your lifestyle. We're trying to factor in your debts and just having that, uh, the shift in the process itself. Uh, we are changing it. It's just bringing up our communities up to speed with it. That's one of the things that I'm finding challenged when I meet with a few clients that have um, been with advisors in the past. Yeah, I think that there's so many different ways to do advice and um, because everyone's got their own spin on it, it's it's really hard for the consumers to actually know like what is advice and um, what should they be expecting. We probably don't make it any easier for them doing everything a little bit differently but also that's i think that's part of the magic of it as yeah. well so um yeah it's a bit a bit of a double-edged edge sword there i think daniel what would you say what's been the most difficult skill that you've had to master to be the advisor that you are today uh one of the actually one of my own personal skills was confidence i had to overcome that from what i went through during that transitional period uh, that would be one of my biggest challenges as a personal skill. But from a professional level, I was always up to date with compliance. I was always ahead with compliance. And being in an education space always sort of gave me the um, the upper hand with the new changes coming through when they made it regular, um, 
regulatory that everybody had to have their masters or their degrees i was already at the tail end of having that i'm fortunate because of that because today i'm actually able to work with cqu university and dr angelique mcginnis and andrew lang and educating the students through this uh, through their educational journey so the compliance side of it was um yeah something i was adapted nicely to nice and i think that's yeah it's a, obviously a crucial part um and a, and a complex one Talking though about the, you mentioned building building confidence, confidence in what you're doing and how you're working with clients. How, if I can ask you, how have you tackled building that muscle for you? Yeah, I think most of it was just getting back out there and doing it again, just seeing clients, um, backing myself, being prepared to, you know, I had this great team of people that are around me that wanted to see me succeed at the time and just having that uh, the network support and just going out there and doing it. Uh, up until 2019, I used to be actually scared to be in front of a camera. And that's just to stand there and someone take a photo of me. But now I'm sitting in there, I'm doing podcasts, I'm going out on YouTube as much as I can, I'm getting right out there. And to anyone that's ever um, challenged with that, with um, you know trying to find that confidence, just do it. There's a there's a few introverts that I did mentor with today and I'm, I can't tell you exactly the words I used to tell you also being recorded then, but... Uh, mm -hmm. um, Found, I found a key secret that brings it out in people and just brings out this whole new life with inside of themselves to actually find that inner confidence within themselves. And, yeah, that's how I tackle I just keep doing it. Oh, but practice makes perfect. And I think um, a lot of people are, are quite surprised when I share my story around some of that stuff that I until before COVID I'd never done a webinar or um, I'd done a handful of like short form videos, but not a lot. And it, that used to terrify me as well. And it's only really in doing it and, and just doing it consistently that you, you do, um, you know, that sort of subsides over time that, that you get, you get used to it, find your feet, find your rhythm and then um, figure it out from there. But I think it's, like anything, you know, the, the first time or the first 10 times you, you're going to be packing bricks. It's just uh, something that you need to, to push through no matter what your skills are in, in other areas um, as well, or at least that's that's how I found it for me. Yeah, yeah I definitely hear what you're saying there, Ben. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yeah, once you, once you take those first few steps, it's sort of like once you overcome it, the, you know, what are people going to think? What are they going to say? And, the, yeah, just keep doing it and, you, yeah, look where you no are. No one cares. No one cares that much, I don't think. Like, I think you build it up so much in your head that, oh, what if I stuff that up or uh, something like that. It's like people are really hardly paying attention. You're just paying attention just enough to um, for it to connect, you know, sometimes. So uh, I think we yeah, we, we build it up a bit more than we, we need to and that can be a big barrier. Daniel, what are you focused on today? What, what's, uh, what's, your, what's your focus at the moment? My focus has still been on the client experience from start to finish with the journey. Uh, we've all got our own techniques. We've all got our own skill set. We've all got that, you know, what we can bring to the table. And that's why I really try to phone, um, really hone in on what I want to achieve with being a financial advisor, being a director, and sort of like uh, really in perfecting that skill. But it's sort of like a, a one model doesn't fit all, but it can be adapted in a way to enhance it for everybody. We want our clients to walk away with a smile on their face going, wow, man, that was the best thing we did. We're so glad we've done that. And just finding that perfect formula on how to make that happen is where we're focusing on today. Nice. And how do you do that? Uh, I would like to say trial and error all over again. Um, <laughs> but it's pretty much you just get a, a feel for each client and that after a while, once you you know brought in these new systems, these new processes, brought in these new things that you're working on you sort of you get this uh like an inner feeling if it's working or if it doesn't feel like it's working that just the way that it's reacting with like clients are reacting to it uh one of the things i studied a couple of years ago was nlp where we looked at the different types of personality with people and how we can even if they like to be um, if they're analytic and they like spreadsheets and whatnot if they're more visual if they want to look at charts and things like that and just learning skills like that, you start to learn the different clients that you're dealing with and the different types that they like and basically creating models around that that you can actually interpret it for each client that you deal with. I love that. Um, and I think, yeah, like we, we've we got our way of thinking, 
but one of the things that I've done through through our business coach is we did this profiling, sort of like disc profiling, but um, it's called Wealth Dynamics. And that goes a long way to talking about, it talks about where you're in flow, but also your communication styles. And through that learning, I've adapted how I deliver to internally to our team, but also to our clients as well. We don't get our clients to do the the full profiling tool, although I think that would be pretty valuable. But you can sort of get that sense as an advisor when something isn't connecting, you know, how do you pivot your your approach and your education around that so that it, it does? Because I think as much as the plan is the plan is the plan, it's like people need to understand it and have that confidence in it so that they can actually make it work, so that they can make it so that they get the results that they want. Yeah. So, so what is your profile then, then of the uh, Wealth Dynamics? I'm a mechanic. You're a mechanic? So, mechanic. Yeah, oh, I'm a star. You're a star. Okay. I'm a star, yeah. I'm up there with Michael Jordan and Michael Jackson. It's all in the name Jackson, by the way. <laughs> there you go. That, uh, that sort of surprised me a little bit, but also it doesn't. Um, but I think like for anyone that's not familiar with that tool, it's like there's four different energies that people have, which is creative energy, detail energy people energy and timing energy and for a mechanic is i've got high creative energy high detail energy is why i love spreadsheets um but i've got less on the people side which is sort of interesting as an advisor that and it's true like i feel it that if i do a a a day full of back-to-back meetings i feel super drained at the end of the day but if i spend a day working on projects working on spreadsheets i feel jacked at the end of the day so it what it means also for for me like I like succinct communication that gets straight to the point. I don't like the fluff or or filler stuff. Whereas for other different profiles, that they they really need that. They think that if you're being too direct, that it's like it's abrupt, and then they can sort of tune out as well. So it does add another dimension. I think I've used it a lot within our team, but also with the work that we do with clients, it adds another dimension to that. That you've got to you know write um, approach, right education, right results, but in the way that that actually works for them as well. Daniel, what, um, where do your new clients come from at the moment? So my, I built my, uh, my whole business was built organically. Um, and basically what I did is I became the king of branding. So we've, when you're starting a business, for anyone that's out there about to start a business or looking at building their businesses, two areas that you need to focus from at the start, you need to focus on your brand and who you are and what you're going to be giving back out to the community. And you also need to focus on your processes and the steps that you're going to take to uh, actually get out there and do it. There's a lot of advisors that I mentor today and they either go one or the other. If they're, especially if they're really good with compliance, they've got this really great process that they're going to write and they've, you know, they've got it yeah. all mapped out. But if they don't start branding, they're not going to have the clients to use those processes. And vice versa, we've got um, new business owners that are really great at getting their name out there. But when the clients come in, they don't kind of know what to do. So you've got to put them both together and they're both equally as important for each other. And you've just got to, um, you just got to focus. Uh, so for me, for my clients, it's all about the branding. The, uh, the modern you is sort of a, um, we use that word particularly because it's got the MMY. So we've actually trademarked their, my financial planners. Uh, people think of MYFP, they think of MYOB. So they, it's easy for them to remember. We've mm. got an office in one of the major intersections in our town, so everyone drives past, keep going past this massive billboard, and it's just uh, doing what we can. We do a lot of work in the uh, community. We don't actually advertise on radio or advertise on TV. What we do is we advertise by how we give back to the community. We, um, you know, we major sponsors for charity golf events. Uh, major spon- uh, we sponsor, you know, up and rising athletes. And you would just get out there, and that's how I was able to build a um a massive database of clients. Adrian Paddy, one of the co-founders of XY, he was the king of advice processes. He had a process for everything, and the most detailed insurance process that I've ever seen in my life, um, before or since. But uh, he used to love his process so much that he just he he looked after his clients that he did have, but he he wasn't focused on growing his business because he was so caught up on on the process piece and i think you you've hit a bang on that if you're not he's actually pivoted into tech now so he can let his process uh run wild but um yeah from a from an fp business that you do need to find that that balance that balance as you say because uh, one one just doesn't work but 
I think that that is um, getting the message out there really critical and it, a lot of sort of guerrilla marketing stuff that it's good to see that you don't have to take that traditional approach to to make that work as well. Yeah, as I say, we're in this new shifting environment. We've got to do this new shifting way of thinking about how we're going to get that message out there. So it sort of uh, plays in our favour on that front about using yeah. the old styles of advertising. We yeah do the same with new styles today. Mm, and I think that people are so switched on to the the old school approach that it just doesn't, there's just so much noise. It still sort of blows me away. You see these companies with traditional advertising and I just think like, what is the ROI that they're getting on that? And I suppose they've got these ginormous budgets so maybe that does move the dial more than, than you would see it. But yeah, I just wonder, you know, if it's actually, if it is actually worth it. But there's these days there's so many opportunities to do things a little bit differently and particularly once you're clear on who who the people are that you want to um, be talking to or that you want to know about you that it does almost point you at some of the the ideas that you can get to to get that message out there so yeah that's a well done those that's a great success story Daniel my um, my last question for you is is that if you could go back to yourself, you know, about to roll up, roll down the, the shingle day one in, in starting your business and do one thing differently, what would it be? Uh, what would I do differently? Uh, I'd probably smile more. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that I'll, I'll smile more if I had to start it off differently. I think um, if I was to start it off again from day one, starting my business, uh I probably wouldn't do a lot different, to be honest with you. I'm actually really happy with the outcome. I think I would just take a little bit more time and to listen to people a little bit more from the start. That would be what I would change. If I was to start uh, my business again today, it would be just to start listening to a few people. So Clients I was very, or both? Uh, pretty much more so from my peers. Hmm. I was I was very lucky because when I went over to Interprac, um, there was this, uh, this woman, Sharon Walker. She's an AFA Excellence Award winner for the Female yep. of the Year. And she actually became my personal mentor in the industry. And she, the wealth of knowledge that she gave me in developing my business, I was very, very fortunate in that. And I'd say get more uh, mentors and listen a lot more to people. And I love it. Some wise words there. I think we're, wherever we tread, there's someone that's always been there before. So it makes sense to leverage that experience and, um, you know, shortcut some of those mistakes that, that we have to make. Making the mistakes is sometimes okay, but um, if you can learn from others' mistakes, that's, that's all the better, right? Yeah, that's it. We've all, we all got to make mistakes. The right mistakes, I will point out, not the wrong ones. We've, um, we've got to make the right mistakes in life to learn from them. But it's always good to hear people that have made those mistakes and go, yeah, let's just avoid that altogether. Yeah, wise words. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for sharing your story. It's great to see you kicking goals, mate. Keep up the great work and we'll catch you on the next one. No worries. Thank you very much for having me, Ben.